Hello everyone and welcome to the presentation of Exploring how game genre in student design games influences computational thinking development. My name is Giovanni Troiano and I will be presenting this work on behalf of my colleagues Sinu Chen, Angela Vargas Alba, Gregorio Robles, Gillian Smith, Michael Cassidy, Eli Tucker Raymond, Gillian Pudic and Casper Hartfield. We want to thank the CHI organizers for giving us the best paper award and we also want to thank them for still giving us the opportunity to disseminate our work. This work was a collaborative effort between Northeastern University, Universidad Rey Juan Carlos and the Turk Institute, and it's part of the Building Systems from Scratch project, which is funded by NSF. Let me start by providing context on the Building Systems from Scratch project. In this project, we implemented a STEM curriculum in various middle schools in the Boston area, where we leveraged on game-based and constructionist learning to have eighth graders learn about climate science and systems thinking. The students were asked to program and design games in Scratch and ultimately developed in computational thinking, which we assessed using the Dr. Scratch metrics. Let me explain to you how the Dr. Scratch metrics work. These metrics are based on observable coding practices in Scratch, namely how the Scratch blocks are used to develop and design a program. These practices are then translated into computational thinking dimensions, which in the case of Dr. Scratch are seven, and they are abstraction, parallelization, logic, synchronization, flow control, user interactivity, and data representation. Now, Dr. Scratch will score each of these dimensions on a scale from zero to three, depending on the computational thinking complexity, which reflects the complexity of the underlying programming practices. For instance, you will get one point in logic for using an if block, or you will get two points for using an if-else block. When you sum up the seven dimensions, you can get a maximum of 21 points in computational thinking. This work has three main motivations and objectives. First, we wanted to understand the impact of game genre on computational thinking development. Now, that is important because as this game-based curricula emerge in constructionist education, we want to have a good understanding of how design choices of students impact the way they learn about computational thinking and programming. Second, we wanted to unfold the underlying programming routines by looking at block usage in Scratch. In fact, the Dr. Scratch metrics right now only account for the first instance of block usage. However, how many, for instance, logical blocks are used in storytelling games opposed to action games? And does that make a difference in the final score for computational thinking? Last but not least, we wanted to understand the educational implications of looking at game genre and the impact of design choices. For instance, is there like a particular game genre that's favorable to computational thinking development? In this study, we collected 404 games designed by eight grade students as part of the innovative game-based STEM curriculum. The students designed their games in Scratch to personally reinterpret climate change topics of their choice. For instance, the game at the top, it's a reinterpretation of the ice albedo feedback loop phenomenon, which becomes here a pong game. The one at the bottom, it's called government simulator. It's a game that asks players to act like politicians and take decisions that can impact either negatively or positively the environment. We could assess using Dr. Scratch 391 games for their computational thinking proficiency, namely their score from zero to 21 on all the seven CT dimensions or the score from zero to three on each individual computational thinking dimension. Then we could analyze 325 games for their computational thinking development based on a decile analysis. That means that we kept track of the evolution of the score for each project from their beginning to the end. The context in which we carried out the assessment was of course the game genre. To identify the game genre, we used both the triadic game design model and the categorization of game genre in HCI proposed by Heinz and Lowe. Furthermore, we analyzed the underlying programming routines of the student design games by looking at block usage in Scratch. After multiple rounds of coding, we could finally identify 10 game genre in our student design games. You will find more detailed descriptions about each game genre in our paper, but I'm going to provide a few here to give you an overview and a sense of the game design displayed by students in our dataset. 
Pong games were the most popular in our data set with 96 Pong games designed by students. Albedo Pong is a perfect example of such a Pong games. The climate change elements here are well integrated in the game mechanics, where an ice pedal will shrink every time the sun ray, a tiny yellow ball, hits the ocean surface after bouncing back from the sky. This game will represent the ice albedo feedback loop phenomenon, and it shows how breaking it can eventually lead to global warming. Pet Earth, instead, is a pet simulator where the player is asked to feed and give a shower to planet Earth. However, by the end of the game, the player will soon learn that the indiscriminate consumption of food and water can actually be harmful to the planet. Carbon Clicker is a simple clicker game which shows players how the misuse of technology can lead to a massive production and release in the air of CO2 and thus be harmful to our planet. Finally, the shooter game Icecap Hero transforms alien invaders into CO2 invaders. Shooter games are also the games with the highest competitional thinking score in our dataset and the ones that used most block in Scratch. Now let's see if game genre actually did have an impact on the final score in competitional thinking proficiency as assessed by Dr. Scratch in our student designed games. The lowest score was produced by quiz games with a mean score of 13.4. Puzzle and quiz game showed the larger variations and clicker and maze games showed the smaller variations. We performed a one-way ANOVA on the dataset to find that game genre does have a significant impact on the final score in competitional thinking proficiency. A post hoc test showed that this significance can be attributed to quiz game. This means, and the results suggest, that designing quiz games may not be advisable or may not be good from a competitional thinking learning perspective. Now let's see if game genre also has an impact on the competitional thinking proficiency of each individual dimension. Shooter games scored the highest in abstraction with a mean score of 2.18. I just want to remind you that the maximum score of Dr. Scratch in each competitional thinking dimension is three. Storytelling games scored the maximum in parallelism or parallelization. Maze games scored almost the maximum in synchronization with a mean score of 2.97. We performed a multivariate ANOVA to find a significant impact of game genre on the competitional thinking proficiency of each individual dimension. A post hoc test revealed that quiz and storytelling make this significance in the dataset appear as they score the lowest in logic and parallelism consistently, with the score in each of these two dimensions being always lower than two. Now let's see how game genre differently impacts the competitional thinking development in student designed games. As we can observe, most of the competitional thinking increase in all the dimensions happens quite early in the projects, specifically within the first 3D styles. Now in our dataset, that means four days of work out of two weeks of curriculum. So we found this to be a time critical period for competitional thinking development means that within the first three or four days of work, competitional thinking profiles will consolidate and then leave space for more specific or refined game design practices later on. Now, if we observe the individual dimensions of competitional thinking and how their score evolves over time, we can also see some interesting patterns. For instance, in swipe elimination logic at the beginning is not very strong, but then it boosts quite a bit towards the end of the project to improve towards proficiency. In puzzle games, parallelism is not very strong at the beginning to become then quite proficient towards the end of the project. In platform, the same thing happens with synchronization, not very strong at the beginning, quite proficient at the end. In storytelling, instead, we see that logic is not strong at the beginning, but it doesn't really improve towards the end very much. So in this kind of game, we do not see the same pattern that we see, for instance, in puzzle or in platform. Finally, we can see that simulation is the game genre that has the least increase in all the competitional thinking dimensions within the first three D styles, but then it grows quite a bit towards the end of the project 
and then it becomes quite a bit proficient in all the computational thinking dimensions. Now let's take a look at the results for block usage. While the use of block seems roughly distributed across game genre, we can still notice that, for instance, in quiz and storytelling game, there isn't much frequent use of control and logic blocks. This means that for students, designing such a games may prevent them from becoming proficient in logic and may prevent them from learning how to use logical and conditional statements in programming practices. On the other hand, shooter and simulation games make frequent use of data blocks, meaning that for students, designing these games may have a higher chance compared to other game genre to lead them to proficiency in data representation. While we could not find any significant impact of block usage on computational thinking, we could still find a small but yet significant correlation between block usage and computational thinking. This suggests that future work should further explore and scrutinize the use of blocks in Scratch and better understand how they impact computational thinking, as well as carefully consider how a broader understanding of block usage can inform the redesign of the Dr. Scratch metrics and make them more context and design sensitive. To recap, we have used the Dr. Scratch metrics to assess 391 student design games for their computational thinking proficiency. We also use them to monitor the computational thinking development of 325 games. We identified 10 game genre using the triadic game design model in combination with the HCI categorization of game genre proposed by Heinz and Lowe. The results show that game genre impacts competitional thinking proficiency and development, and that block usage correlates to competitional thinking, but needs further scrutiny in future work. Finally, we leave you with some points for discussion and reflection. We've seen how game genre impacts the computational thinking score progression already in the early phases of game design. For instance, action games led to the highest computational thinking development between DCL0 and DCL1, meaning that action games boosted computational thinking already within the first day of work. Essentially, after DCL3, or day four of work is game design time. And this meant that in our curriculum, students had 10 days to focus on their game design, which is plenty of time. But it also meant that their computational thinking profiles consolidated pretty early and only marginally changed thereafter. So this results suggest that educators in game-based constructionist curricula carefully monitor the computational thinking development of their students right when they start their game design projects and that ideally they expose their students early to different game genre or ask their students to program different games with different genre so that they can learn computational thinking from different game design perspectives. We've also seen how the familiarity of popular games influenced what students designed. In fact, Clicker and Pong games are 47% of the data set. These results are consistent with previous work who showed how popular games influence game design in young students. And this may even have implications in gender and inclusivity in game-based curricula. For instance, storytelling games are the ones that score the lowest. However, the literature also showed that female students prefer storytelling games the most. As designing quiz and storytelling games may have prevented students from developing in computational thinking dimensions such as logic, our results partially challenge the notion of free form learning in constructionist curricula. And so we suggest that maybe a mix and match of instructionism and constructionism may be beneficial to computational thinking learning. Again, my name is Giovanni Troiano, and I want to thank you all for uh, having watched this presentation also on behalf of my colleagues. We hope you enjoyed it and we hope to see you soon at next Kai. Also, if you want more information about the project Building Systems from Scratch, you can visit buildingsystems.turk.edu. Thank you.